Detroit, Michigan has a special place in my heart. Once it was a hub of brilliance, beauty, and fantastic music. In the decades since, the bright, shining city has dimmed. In 2005, when I lived off the infamous Eight Mile, I understood better than most what my hometown was going through. Detroit and I shared a similar pain, and together we barreled towards instability. Motown crumbled around me with self-inflicted wounds that would not heal. And one night, my city-sized mirror revealed an internal reality with too great of a reflection. I can't express the weight of hopelessness I felt on that night as I stood there utterly and silently alone. Every negative emotion imaginable gathered together in my thoughts, like the tears that flowed freely and gathered at the base of my neck. On that fateful night, I wanted to die. And thank God that I didn't, because the next day, everything changed. My grandparents called me for the first time in years and empowered my life with simple words. They loved me. I hadn't heard that in so long. Not from the, my biological father who left when I was born, or the man I tried to call dad until the physical abuse tore my family apart. Not from the government-funded system that legally kidnapped me or all the foster families, and definitely not the woman who chose to adopt and later abandon me. Those simple words gave me the life I nearly lost. They loved me. Life changed, and in 2006, I settled down in Dayton, Ohio, with new friends that echoed those same words of love. Brian was one of those friends, and one day, he and his dad did something for me that I'll never forget. They bought me my very first cup of black coffee. Boston Stoker's Highlander Grod. It tasted of rich Irish cream, sweet rum, and thick maple syrup. Instant addict. <laughs> With that single cup, life exploded. It wasn't long before Brian and I were doing all the things that great friends do, but even I was surprised when I started falling in love with his sister. It took me a few years to build the courage to ask her out, and it helped that Brian moved to Japan with me safely out of his arm's reach. <laughs> but today, Leah and I are still madly in love, all thanks to one simple cup of coffee. In 2012, my dream job was finally met. I became a barista. Today, I get to serve those same memorable experiences to customers that walk through my door every day. And there are many stories like that one. Uh, like when over a latte, a stranger offered me a new place to call my home. Or when my very concept of community was redefined at an Ethiopian coffee ceremony. Across the country, thousands of passionate baristas share my desire. And you can see that particularly well at a caffeine crawl, which is a lot like a bar crawl, but it's slightly more sober. <laughs> <laughs> at these crawl events, you can see guests have their attention grabbed by artistically crafted cups of coffee and enchanted by the stories and dreams of coffee shop owners. Sometimes you get to see one of those dreams fulfilled, like when a guest receives their first perfectly prepared pour over and they declare that this is the best coffee they've ever tasted. <laughs> those are special moments, not just serving a cup of joe, but a cup of joy. And that's why we're all here. This is why we've made coffee our careers and why we're so passionate about it. And not just because we're all pretentious snobs, but because of real opportunities for human connection. And that's what this is all about, what the coffee community stands for. High quality, high standard of service, and a few dimples riding high up on a customer's cheeks. That's why we're here. That's, that's why we do this. Because your stories are worth it. 
You're, you're worth it, us becoming better baristas and learning to brew better cups of coffee. You're worth it. Your lives are worth it. Your smiles are worth it. They keep us coming back every day with the hope that we can serve special moments that might change someone's day, maybe even save their life. In 2005, I had a Detroit-sized crater in my heart and a lack of purpose. Many people around the world feel that same way, and we don't even know it. Look at your neighbor. Do you know with absolute certainty that they don't need your friendship? Can you say that they couldn't use a cup of coffee? Nobody ever lost their life by buying a cup of coffee for a friend or a stranger. So let's do that for them. I can't end today without speaking directly to those of you who understand and feel the same weight of hopelessness that I once did. You can overcome this with help, with people around you. It doesn't matter what some other people might say or what you might say to yourself. You are worth love. And, and if you can't find someone to tell you, then let me. If you ever find yourself in my area, give me a call. There's a local cafe that I think we should visit. Coffee's on me. Thank you.